Let me continue where we left off a few minutes ago. Again, um, these are the hardware side that you will be dealing with when you get out to the PC world. Again, we deal with PCs and Microsoft. This is how I use that plat the platform synonymously with it as well. Um, CPU, I hope you know what CPU It's the brain of the computer, most expensive piece of the hardware. More, more important because it's the type of gold that's why it is expensive. It's uh, Go is a wonderful type of conductor that um, sends signals, electrical signals around. It's probably the only piece of hardware in your computer that has uh, Go uh, built into it because of conduction with it as well. The central processing unit also carries out the arithmetic and logical operators. Later on we're going to talk about logical operators and relationship operators and different type of arithmetic presidents that allows you to um, calculate mathematical problems with it as well. We'll, we'll, di we'll dive into this much deeper. If you take a look at this wonderful diagram, this is from your book, this is figure 1-1. Um, it depicts a really good, 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 meaningful picture as graphic. And this stuff we're talking about is pretty abstract. But this, you know, my DS Malik MS uh, DS Malik, the author, uh, does a wonderful job uh, on on this on this diagram. And let me walk you through what he means by this. If you notice the green box here, it's, it contains the CPU and your main memory. It talks back and forth with it. So when the CPU it loads up and is processing, it's running back and forth between uh, here with it. And you notice the secondary or your C drives outside of that. So, to give you an example, your system tray that you have at the bottom, that is your main memory. That's your memory that actually allows you to talk to back and forth. Anything that you load your system tray, which is the right hand corner of your computer. That's your system tray. Anything that runs on your task, that's in your main memory. Windows 7, when you load Windows 7 up operating system, it runs about 1 gigabyte of RAM. So you can see, if you're running multiple applications such as Photoshop, Dreamweaver, Visual Studio, you're running, you know, Autodesk software with it, you can dry up, suck up the main, the, the main memory. So on the right hand side over here, the main memory is depicted by an address, the location, in bits and uh, with it, which is hexadecimal with this. So I think the the message here is the main memory, which is also known as the RAM, RAM, you know, random access memory, is plays a key vital role in our programming with it. So again, I, I can't stress enough the key thing is memory management and how we manage the memory and allow the memory to actually um, control that memory and that resource that we have with it. Okay. I'm going to go on to the next side of the slide. It talks about the CPU and the main memory with it. Again, uh, everything that we talked about, random access memory, connects one between the CPU and the RAM memory. It comes across with it as well. So um, this is probably, this next slide is a secondary storage. Hard drive, flash drive, the only thing that's probably relevant on this is the hard drive disk. Flash drive is, is on its way going out. Um, I don't think there's, they're not they're not too popular because of the cloud. We store things on digital Dropbox now. We use the G drive. So you know media such as flash drive that's on its way going out. It has its time and its place. You never will see a floppy disk, zip disk, CD-ROMs are rare now, and tapes. Um, these are things that actually uh, probably belong to the Smithsonian nowadays. With it, so you're not going to see. Uh, any of these hardware uh, laying around with it. Let me take you to the next set of slide, a couple of things, input output device with it. I'm going to have you read this. Uh, pretty self explanatory with it. Software, just key things. Okay, there's application softwares, there's system program softwares, there is, you know, um, software with that utility that's built with this thing. <coughs> Please know this you know, our computers take instructions from zeros and one. And let me allude to this. This is a very important fact. I'm going to stop right here. The Microsoft Visual Studio compiler takes higher level language that we actually use in coding. C++ is a high level of language programming. 
that allows you to actually to convert to down to machine level language. Machine level language, such such, such as your your assembly language, you understands zeros and ones in here. So these are things that will we play a fight a role and key role in when we program on in Visual Studio. It writes it down to machine language with us. So um, I want to pause right here. I want to stop.